So one of our uh, mastermind members brought up a question the last time we were together in Austin. He was saying that, you know, they're doing a great job converting on the front end. You know, we've uh, given some advice and they've just been cranking along on their own uh, selling through Facebook ads. And so that's going. Their biggest trouble is running out of inventory, which is a good problem to have. But they did mention one issue, which is that they're having a hard time getting people to come back and buy again. The repeat purchase rate is too low. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is how do you increase your lifetime value, which a big part of that is your repeat purchase rate. So the first thing is to think about is number one, you must sell good products people are happy with because there's really two reasons where people are going to come back and buy. Number one, you sell good products people are happy with, so they're happy with that first purchase. And then second, you have to have stuff they want to come back and buy. Sounds very simple, but they were really missing that second part. People were happy with the first product, but they didn't really have a strong reason for those same people to come back and buy again. So in this episode, we're going to talk about five strategies to increase lifetime value. So in the past three episodes, we've started covering the four reasons your sales funnel may be broken. And so I've gone into each one of these and what to do about it. So number one is you have a low conversion rate. You're maybe not getting anybody to buy or not enough people. Number two, you have a low average order value or AOV, meaning you're getting people to buy, but they're not spending enough money. Number three, you have a too high of a cost per acquisition meaning it's costing you too much with whatever ad platform you're using to get somebody to buy at all. And so now, assuming each one of those is fine, now number four, you have a low lifetime value. And so here are the five strategies to increase lifetime value. If you go through each one of these past three episodes plus today, tick off each one of those, do those steps in there, your sales funnel will improve dramatically. And so here's the last one where you got a good conversion rate, you got a good average order value up front, your cost per acquisition is reasonable, but nobody's coming back and buying again. And so that's usually going to be seen in your low lifetime value. So strategy number one to increase lifetime value, I talked about this in the average order value episode, is to increase average order value. And because from the studies that I've seen, average order value is about 68% of your total lifetime value, because a lot of people are not going to come back and buy, even if you do a good job. So that first order that they make has to be as high as possible. And so review the episode on increasing average order value because that's also going to drive up your lifetime value. This is repetitive, but it's on purpose. Average order value is usually the biggest opportunity for most people trying to improve an e-commerce sales funnel. So focus there. Number two to increase lifetime value, upsell more premium products. Great example of this is Vitamix. If you go to Vitamix's website, they have blenders from everywhere from 200 bucks up to like 600 plus dollars. And so I guarantee you that when somebody buys a $200 blender, they're doing everything they possibly can to sell them a 300 a 400 a 500 or 600 dollar plus blender. And so this is one of the pieces of advice that I gave our mastermind member. Uh, Cause you know, they sell a product that you don't necessarily need two of. And so I told him, I was like, why don't y'all create a premium version? Cause I believe the one that they sell now, I think they sell for like 30 to $40. Why don't y'all create a premium one that's like a hundred bucks? And so then, even though people may not need two of the same thing, a significant chunk, if you gave them the option to get a better, uh, even better materials, even if it's functionally exactly the same, but it's got better materials, higher quality, uh, more premium feel to it, some of those people will come back and buy those. And uh, it's basically free money because remarketing to your existing customers is so much cheaper than going out there trying to find new customers. So number two is to upsell more premium products. If you have your best selling product right now, I guarantee you it's going to be such easy money. If you just go create a more premium version of your best selling product, then go back to everyone who bought your best selling product, which is going to be the majority of your customers and sell them your more premium one. And you don't even have to start with a lot of units. Start with a low number of units, 100, 200 units. See how it goes. I guarantee you. This is going to be a very valuable strategy for you to use in your business forever. Number three, sell complimentary products. This one is fairly obvious, but is one that they were also kind of missing. They were having some supply chain issues on some of their complimentary products. They had one complimentary product, but it was so commoditized. Uh, it's literally the same exact thing everyone sells. And so you could just go buy that same complimentary product um, on Amazon and you would have no reason to ever go buy it from these guys. And so when you sell complimentary products, they, you need to have something unique about them so people can really only get them from you, even if it's just how you position and brand the products, but you want something unique so that they have to come back to you and get these things. Um, a lot of businesses have done this very well. 
um, such as you know the whole razor companies. You know they only have one little attachment, so you have to go back to buy extra blades to use that same sort of main handle part. Um, lots of businesses have done this, and so selling complementary products that people can only get from you is an easy way to add extra value. And, and ideally, those products are very high margin. And so you may have to fight tooth and nail to get people to buy that first product, but the upsell products, the complementary ones, that's a much easier sell, and it's kind of impulsive, and so you should be able to pad an extra margin with those products. Number four, create a subscription program. Because if you think about it, getting someone to come back and buy again, in most cases, that involves you having to market them, grab their attention, get them to come to your site, convince them to buy that thing, they have to go find their credit card, they have to pull out their credit card, they have to enter their credit card, then they give you more money. A much more ideal situation is they make a decision one time to give you money automatically in the future through a subscription, and they have to do all those steps but in reverse to not give you money. They have to go find your website, they have to go log into subscription area, they have to cancel that subscription, they have to remember what the heck they're ordering. So they have to opt out instead of having to opt in much better situation for you as a business owner. So in almost all cases, it's gonna make sense for you to try to figure out some sort of subscription program for your business. Give people a hefty discount to get on that because their lifetime value, from what I see, like for example, our lifetime value on Amazon is double for people that are subscribe and save customers and are not subscribe and save customers. Our lifetime value on Shopify, if you're looking out like two years, is about triple um, for subscription customers versus non-subscription. So number four, create a subscription program some way or another. Number five is once you've done all these things, you've increased average order value, you're upselling more premium products, you're selling complimentary products, and you have a subscription program, number five is to follow up every way humanly possible <laughs> to tell people about all these other things you have to offer. So once somebody buys from you, obviously you wanna nurture them, let them get access to the product, make sure they don't have any issues. Once that period of initial use is over and you're ready to start reselling them, follow up with them every way possible. Email autoresponders is a basic. SMS autoresponders is another good one postcard automation using a tool, the best one I know is Postpilot, we use them. And so they're built into Shopify. Postpilot is good. Retargeting people at minimum on Facebook and Instagram, but ideally on other platforms as well, such as YouTube and Google, uh, possibly TikTok and some other platforms. So following up through retargeting ads is another good one. Um, so use every single one of those techniques if possible. Another good option is to include package inserts, whether you're selling on Amazon or your own website, giving people a discount to come back and rebuy from you is another form of following up uh, with them, especially if you even have some of the stuff printed on your actual products. So every time they're using it, they're seeing an opportunity for them to get a discount or some sort of reason to come sign up at your website so you can follow up with them. So those are the main five strategies to increase lifetime value. If you use every single one of these, your lifetime value is going to increase dramatically from where it is today. So these were the four lessons on fixing your sales funnel. Starting tomorrow, we're gonna to get back into more strategies to improve your e-commerce marketing within this series, this 30-day series of finding a big breakthrough in your e-commerce business or learning how this whole machine works if you're starting from scratch. And so thank you very much for listening and I'll see you tomorrow.